today we're going to get to understand how their newsroom works, their different segments, their different sections, and ultimately get into a discussion at the end about print media in Zimbabwe. This is the, the reporter says that mm -hmm. in a setup like Zimbabwe, the way we bring everybody to the diary. Right. It's not necessarily the same with the trailers because there are many. Okay. They may you may call senior guys alone, but we bring everybody else. So we're sitting there. Mm -hmm. Everybody the highest item. This week I'm working on a ZFM. They're doing a documentary, it's a story. Okay, how are you gonna source it? So mm -hmm. say, no, I'll speak to the Veneco. I already have these documents, blah blah blah. Okay, everybody says yeah, the sounds solid. Mm -hmm. Then we we'll move on to the next person to justify your stories, to explain right. them. Some right. get dropped because people say, I mean, yeah, yeah. We'll it's just going say, we're, 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 we're just going to be wasting time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's no, see, I get it. Uh, let's work with things that are workable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. they were, at the end it's consolidated. Mm -hmm. No, guys, let's get going. Good. Uh, so this is your newspaper, basically, like? Yeah. Okay. I think one is a ton. One so weighs a ton. I think so, yes. Yeah? One. Uh -huh. But I think they use, uh, for us, I think they use two, three reels for the whole... For the whole uh, media house? No, no, no. Uh. I think per day. Per, per day? Per issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really so impressive. this is the computer to play. Mm -hmm. uh, computer to play. What, what does that them? mean? They the same machines. They do the same work. Okay. Yeah, so when Jumi and his team uh, are done, they send uh, the papers uh, online mm -hmm. and we can view them from here, just mm -hmm. like this lady is doing. Okay. So what is this? These are the plates which carry the images that we put on the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so they are loaded on in this machine. Right. And then the, the image that is on the computer today is transferred onto the plates, mm -hmm. this, the, 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 the exposure. Mm -hmm. And then they go into this machine. Mm -hmm. Like if you had seen them, they'll be like uh, in this state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the image is then exposed on this plate. Okay. So these are basically reporters mixed with sub editors okay. on this section. Okay. Because we've converged the newsroom. So right. it's no longer Zimi and that side separate, mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, together, it's combined. Good, good. Yeah, all the newspapers, yeah. No, so but these are the guys who write the story. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't write, we just edit to them. We don't actually you know what's going on. You basically do all the work. And these guys, <laughs> they are the ones who really know. Yeah. Then the plates are cleaned and this contains a lot of chemicals. Right. Yeah, to wash away the unwanted areas. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. And as the, the result comes out, we now have the image mm -hmm. on the plates. Okay, yeah. good. So when we have these plates, we take them to the machine and then we mount them up. Are they recyclable? Mm, yeah. You're going to use them again and again. Ah, I see. Okay. Good evening and welcome to My Future. I'm Ruven Nicole. We've taken a tour around, as you saw, with uh, Mr. Dunsani Mulea, who is the overall, um, he basically monitors all the newspapers around uh, the, the, the publication. They all have, there's uh, the Zimbabwe Independent, there's the Newsday, uh, there's the Standard. And uh, he basically monitors the newsroom and the happenings around here. So he took us on a tour. We saw where everything gets printed, um, where everything gets written. And now we're going to continue in our conversation, as you know, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about media in Zimbabwe. So now focusing on print media, we have two deputy editors with me. Um, we have the deputy editor of H Metro, and uh, his name is Charles Mushinga. Welcome. Thank you, Veneco. And we also have the deputy editor of the Newsday, that's Amaba Machazi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, so um, the first question I have for you as deputy editors is, what makes a headline? Well, what makes a headline is a few words that really summarize the story. Um, but these words have to be catchy, and therein lies the problem of casting a headline. Mm -hmm. So um, it's basically a summary of what, what is carried in the story, and um, that's, that's your headline. So, and what's your interpretation? Well, probably almost the same. It's all about catchy, uh, catching attraction of person passing on the street to say, I'm going to buy this copy. It's also um, 
if I can describe it as a summary, together with the introduction, summary of the whole newspaper. I mean, sorry, of the whole story. So knowing any of your answers, was there the word truth, fact? So in the headline, are those two things not supposed to exist? When it comes to a headline, does it become about business and marketing and that you need to sell the newspaper? Well, I think truth is inherent. It's in the story. Um, what the headline is doing is summarizing the story and what truth is in the story. So I think it's a point that you don't have to say. It's a, a net point a that you think is there. always summarizes the story. Is that true? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You'll still also... have your job, Baba, <laughs> if you tell us the truth. Okay. No, certainly. Honestly speaking, mm -hmm. we know for a fact okay. that we have picked up newspapers having been sold a headline, right? And after reading the story, you realize that, hang on, that has nothing to do with the headline. Well, um, a, a lot of other things come in. Um, there what, we go. what we have given mm. you is I don't um, agree with the them. primary <laughs> function yeah. of a headline. Mm. Um, so you'll find sometimes it actually doesn't state what's in the story. And um, the question, the answer will lie in the story. So, but uh, we, we were describing the primary function of the headline or the basic um, well-known um, mm -hmm. headline that is out there. So you, you, you do have some headlines. That are driven it depends with the stories. Yeah. They are feature stories, mm. and they need some headlines that are more catchy because it's, it's, the, the subject is not right. new. Then I think what mm. you're explaining is the mischief part, mm. where someone is selling you um, bottled air. Yeah. Where someone says, but that's not generally what happens all the time. What we try to do is, because we have credibility issues to go with, we try and have our headline and our story being the same. I'm not so, saying it doesn't okay. happen. Yeah. But the people who cheat their way through always. I like what you've both touched on and I'll probe it further and say what then makes a story? Is it the subject or, as in, or is it the story? Is it the person in the story or is it the story? Because you'll find now when you drive down the road, as you said, you want to catch the attention of the driver or the pedestrian or the commuter. Sometimes we're stopped when we see a name. So what I've noticed about newspapers these days is you sell a name a lot of us won't really see what the sentence is on the headline, but you'll see a name, it'll catch your attention, and because maybe that person is of interest, you'll pick up the paper. So what are you aiming to achieve? Are you selling the story or are you selling the subject? Well, it's usually both. Um, it's interchangeable, really. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, the story is so unique that no matter who is involved in the story, it's still something that people would want to read about. Mm -hmm. But then there are other times when something that is rendered normal uh, to, to other human beings yeah. um, happens to a prominent person. Mm -hmm. And then um, you, you find that the story is made prominent by the fact that this person is well known. Right. So it's, it's, it's interchangeable. Well, I think most, uh, again, probably to add on to what is like, there's things called news values. Mm -hmm. uh, prominence, proximity, locality, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, in a headline, there's no point in me, for example, writing about uh, someone in South Africa and putting it on page one, and mm -hmm. this is our president who does something in South Africa. But if it's a South African who's probably dancing his way to fame in South Africa, I'm not gonna have him on page one. And also, uh, like, all our papers are here in Harare, and our biggest market is Harare too. So what we try to do is have a headline or stories actually that connect with the pe person in Harare. Mm -hmm. um, they can be, for example, with uh, demonstrations in Baybridge. We have to find a way to make a story or the headline relevant to this market. Yeah, a bit bigger than just Baybridge because right. Baybridge is a small market. It's not our primary. As much as we want to sell, it's not our primary market. Mm -hmm. Most of our papers probably hears more, uh, the target is Harare. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk about, you know, again, the content that you put, particularly on the front page. Okay. And you both represent completely different media houses and different newspapers. Um, I want to start with you as a new deputy editor of Newsday. Um, picking up at Newsday, I noted a couple of times where that top bar, what do you call it? The skybox, is it? Right. Yeah. Um, there was a number of times where you were promoting international celebrities, right? And this is now bringing it back to, as you said, a Harare context, a local context. Why would you skip past all our local celebrities and uh, you know promote that? Because even the story wasn't even a big deal. I remember looking a couple of times saying, why is this relevant to me? 
all right. Um, what drives that? What are you trying to show that you're international? What's the What's the idea? Far from it, I talk mm. to from what uh, mm. foreign uh, artists mm. all the time. Mm. I think maybe the paper that you picked at a foreign artist, but we have to accept that entertainment is a big deal, and mm -hmm. entertainment cutters a lot of our entertainment that we have, uh, as much as there's local entertainment, but. Most of us here are watching DSTV, most of, most of us are on the internet. So these foreign celebrities, once in a while we have them on our front page. And they're quite popular. For example, uh, the past few days I think we had Wonang. That's exactly who I'm referring to. Oh, mm. great minds. <laughs> so you know this. No, yeah. yeah but so you, I guess I just want to understand the thinking behind that, you know. Well, you see, there's a lot of... Because you determine who becomes big. You know what I mean? Bonang is big where she is, but you think of how many local celebrities could use with that sky bar. Far from it. We have local Publicity. celebrities all the time. Not all the time, but most mm. of the time. Uh, Bonang is big. Most of us here <laughs> are watching South African television. We're watching DSTV, and we can't uh, pretend that there's no market for people like Bonang. If uh, the deputy editor of the Newsday was a man, would Bonang be on the sky bar? I'm sure I'm a man. Yes, that's what I'm saying. If it, sorry, if it was a woman, if the deputy editor was a woman, mm -hmm. do you see? Because you're speaking to that appeal, even the photo that you put, it's sexualized, and it comes from that male. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into the depths of the male domination no, of this we, industry we, at all. We can go but, about um, the male gaze, <laughs> the male gaze that you're talking about. No problem with yeah. that. I can explain it. Right. Uh, what we do is, if you look at our skyboxes, we have entertainment and news. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as much as you might think a female. As much as we might hate it, a female is more appealing exactly, on the front page. Exactly, a fine. and mean, it's, it softens know. the page because right. most of the time the entertainment picture. We do have male pictures, by the way, but the, the entertainment picture. It doesn't matter whether it's male or female. It softens the page because page one is politics. The first guy box is politics. <laughs> so entertainment sort of like gives it a. Tones it down, chat. Tones it down a bit. Well, we'll yeah. come to H Metro just after the break. I'm sure a lot of you are dying to know what inspires their front page images. Because we have seen some shocking things, things that I've never even dreamed I'd come across. Um, so we're going to get into that with Charles in just a moment when we come back with more of my future. Stay tuned. Welcome back to My Future, I'm Ruben Nicole, and tonight we are here with uh, the two uh, new deputy editors of two publications here in Zimbabwe. We have uh, Newsday deputy editor, Mabama Chazi, and we also have the H Metro deputy editor, Charles Mashinga. Now, Charles is also the editor of the Sunday Mail Bridge, uh, which is a youth uh, segment in the Sunday Mail. You know, we all get that Sunday Mail that's really thick, that's packed with content, and he's the editor of one of those segments. And just before the break, we were covering a number of aspects of what drives print media, what drives the headlines, you know, what makes a story. And now um, we're just going to speak to Charles here as he's going to tell us a little bit about why it is that H Metro must always fail the breakfast test <laughs> every, every, every day. I guess that's the way they sell their stories. But Charles, please enlighten us on what it is that gets the stamp of approval on an H Metro headline front page. Okay. I'm sure you've noticed that H Metro stays away from the politics. Yeah. That is what makes us unique from the rest of the papers. And you also notice that H Metro is a tabloid. I'm not just in terms of the shape of the newspaper, but in the, uh, in the issues that we tackle. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have stories that are on a social level, human entertainment value. Um, or sometimes not entertainment, but on a human interest value. Right. Um, where we find um, a lot of social issues, ills and uh, great things, um, making our front page. So I'm, I'm sure you've seen the stories and uh, the, the issues that we, um, that we tackle are always social. Right. So uh, lately there's been a series of stories that have come out on the H Metro front page where, um, you know, individuals must be naked, or in bed with one another, is that driven by your agenda or is it driven by what the public tells you they want to hear about? Well, we, we don't have an agenda as such. Um, I don't think any newspaper can have an agenda to undress people. Um, <laughs> but people are doing these things. Um, and um, you know how the media is, is, the, is the full term of government and we're a watchdog of what's happening in society. And if society is going haywire, 
we have to report on such issues. Mm. Um, so I'll give you an example of an issue that can be covered by any paper in the country. Let's say um, you remember the, the issues, the rape cases that Kumbura was involved in. Right. Every newspaper covered that. Mm -hmm. It's not that they are promoting rape. Mm -hmm. But you more than anybody. Well, definitely, yes. we broke that story. Yes. Um, so, so yes, we, we went with it all the way. Right. Before it was even at the court, right. we had hinted on that story. So um, we, we tried to cover such things because we want to protect the girl child from, this, from being raped. And we want to protect so many other bad things from happening in our society. So if you expose one or two individuals, you are giving a lesson to the rest of the country about are you what really? needs not to be done. Surely at some point it's going to fall on deaf ears where you're making something that once used to be taboo, normal. Where now when I see an H Metro headline, and oh, there goes another one. Okay. Maybe the question so what's be, the agenda there? What the are you hoping would to achieve? Be, would you want to be that person on the H Metro front page? Ah, so it's supposed to put the fear of God in us. That yes. we're not supposed to exactly. do because things we're not supposed to be doing, people we're not supposed to be doing them with. Um, it's, it's things that you're not supposed to be doing. Just the same way um, there are reports right now about people being killed in mm. France, mm. you know, 84 people mm. murdered by one person. Mm. Um, when, when such a story makes a headline, we are saying this is an evil man. So when something bad happens and someone is undressed in public or has released a sex tape, we are saying this is bad for the public. And we only report when it is leaked to the public. So this is something that is already contaminating the public. All right. And our report is saying this is the harm that has reached the public. Okay. We don't investigate um, people in their private lodgings and then expose them. Mm -hmm. But we, we report about leaked matters. And we think it's really in the best interest of the country right. for people to know what is out there and how harmful it can be. There are so many people that are murdering people mm. um, and then making it on the front page of newspapers. Mm -hmm. Do you think their parents are angry at the newspapers or they're angry at their son? Doctors are told in the Hippocratic Oath, you know, first to do no harm. As print journalists, what would your code be? I think it's to be truthful fair, balanced, um, the normal ethics that all journalists operate under. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you summed it up pretty well. It's all about objectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think another important point that we, we run away from is h Metro is on the streets today because people are buying it. It means people have an interest. Mm -hmm. Whether we agree with the people or the paper or not, it's a, diff it's a different thing ultimately, mm -hmm. altogether. But what's important is your credibility as a paper. Mm -hmm. When someone buys the news day, I want that person to have faith in that I'm telling the truth. Right. Yeah. So that's the most important thing for us. That's where we draw the bottom line. We have to be credible, mm -hmm. which means giving everybody a voice in the story. Um, and he could not be reached for comment uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, but Maybe that's the general idea. Yeah. As deputy editors of your publications, what do you do to manage the situation around uh, all this reporting of journalists being paid to either remove a story or to put in a particular news story, to push an agenda, to counter an agenda? How are you managing that? It's, it's very difficult. Um, it's a very difficult thing because it's very difficult to prove that someone got money. Mm -hmm. uh, they were probably in a restaurant or something, money was pushed under the table. It's very difficult to prove. Oh, so but you know how this happens? Has this happened I'm to you assuming, before? I'm assuming it happens that way. You are, uh, your friend told you something. No, I read it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So yeah, the, uh, what we do is, what we have done as a paper, I think if you've come across our uh, paper, we've had adverts saying if a journalist were to come to you and say, I'm looking, right. I can, if you give me money, we're not going to publish your story. Please contact this email and we'll deal with them. Mm -hmm. We've had allegations. But another problem is people just come up with random allegations and say, um, Newsday is not publishing the story because they were paid. Whereas probably sometimes we have gone and investigated and found out there's no story at all. Right. But because everyone has an agenda, all the sources that bring stories have agendas. Right. And if the agendas are not fulfilled, they become angry. Right. But right. I'm not going to discount that people, the are allegations of people yeah. getting money. I can't say they have got, but there's that allegation. Right. But when it happens, I think 
what we want is if anyone is going to report it to us, it's going to tell us what's going on. We'll investigate it and deal with the person. Right. Yeah. Um, now, regarding scandals, you know, uh, which is a word that comes to mind when talking about H Metro, and I'm going to ask a political question to both of you, but I want to put it in context of H Metro. If there were to be a scandal of a political figure, um, would you publish that? Because the way that you report, one would assume that all public figures or political figures don't partake in that kind of behavior? Or is it that you are told not to or that you don't subscribe to that kind of reporting? Why is it that, you know, there's none of that? Mm -hmm. Like I said, we do not go out in search of mm -hmm. these things. Um, but you're journalists, so surely you do to an extent. You can't yes, make yes, it seem like extent. you sit at your desk and wait for someone to submit a story and you give them their $50. Surely there's an element of you reaching out for news. Yeah, definitely there's right. an element of us reaching mm. out for news. And there's, uh, if you remember, re recently there was a political figure who was in the H Metro who made the front page and it was big news and it was a bad story um, as far as his reputation was concerned. Um, so if it happens, we, we do not draw a line anywhere. Mm. Um, as long as we have all the evidence, as long as we have spoken to all the parties, anyone story can is a story. make the front page of the H Metro. Right. And uh, to you now, uh, um, Abba, as uh, deputy editor of the Newsday, are there times where, when the political environment is so rife with, uh, you know, controversy and so much activity, do you have to make a conscious effort, whether or not, to publish a particular story at a particular time? Um, if there's one thing that guides us is public interest. Right. So if someone is interested in the story, we're going to publish it. Uh, no, but how do you know? You sit in here in your newsroom and you're generating content, you're writing the stories, and uh, you now have to go through it given your processes. Do you have to actively sometimes take a step back and say, mm, this one, not today? That would be censorship on our part, self-censorship, yeah. which mm -hmm. is the worst kind of censorship ever because you stop yourself from thinking. So what we do is encourage our reporters to go out and look for stories. We have diary meetings, two of them a day. Um, where we sit in the morning, discuss the stories that we want, we go back in the afternoon and say, these are the stories that have been submitted. What do we do about them? Okay, this is missing this, this and that. Then, okay, let's go and fill, uh, fill it in. Oh, it's perfect. So mm. we publish it like that. And so public yeah. interest, uh, if you stay, we're going to publish. And has someone ever come to you and said, no, you don't? Someone from inside or outside? Outside. No, not yet, not as yet. You get people calling you, asking you about the story, saying, I had your boys calling me or whoever calling me about the story. Uh, we have devised a plan that works well for us, for example, where you could even say, no, I'm off duty. I'm, I'm not doing that story. I have no idea about it. I'm off duty. <laughs> Talk to the person who's writing you're the story. You're laughing. You're agreeing. That happens. Is that a common line? Well, I'm uh, not um, on duty like, today. Oh. <laughs> to speak on uh, what you're saying about yeah. public interest, mm. uh, social media is now playing a very role, a huge role in media today. And you can actually tell what people are talking about on social media, through Facebook, through WhatsApp, and you, you get a general idea of what people want to hear about. Mm -hmm. And um, as journalists, we are mandated to fulfill um, what the public wants. Right. And many times, social media is filled with lies. Right. Um, you, you find there are boxes a lot of them, right. and it's up to trusted media right. to actually... Um, Separate the wheat from the chaff. Exactly. Uh, right. And also, uh, just to add on to that point, uh, the point I was speaking about previously, what we've also done is a few times when someone calls you and says, uh, whoever this reporter is doing the story, can you come on this? And no, Aish, the story is big. What you can do is comment and give that person your side of the story, because I may block it, for example, but the editor is there, or the editor might not be there and he gets a call mm. from someone, and I'm here and I just publish it. So at the end of the day, it's in their best interest if they comment on the story, because we can stop it at Newsday, but there's no telling what Independent or The Standard will do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one reporter comes to me and says, I have this story, and I say, oh, nah, that guy's a friend of mine. The next thing he goes to The Standard, because it's just like five meters away. Yeah. So I'm at home on Saturday <laughs> and Sunday, I'm, I'm sleeping, I have no idea what's in the paper. Then I'm getting calls. Ah, you said you're gonna block my story. What ah, happened? I see. So it doesn't make sense. You can, I'm not uh, like I'm gonna go back and say I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Right. But what I'm saying is, even if I were to block a story, I have no idea what these other guys are, are going, going to, to do. do. Sure. Yeah. And the story is a story. I mean, yeah. you can't. Um, and with to to you put it, right? <laughs> so what, what are you gonna do? Exactly. <laughs> with regards to H Metro, there are actually many fake H Metro reporters out there. 
So once you hear someone asking ah. for money, chances are the bogus reporter, and you can fall for the trick and usher out money. The, right. And then the next thing, you are just a victim of, right. of, of right. Uh, bogus journalism. Not, sure. not just Ashmael Shaw. I got a call from the Kariba mayor recently. Mm -hmm. uh, well, she sent someone to call me and said, I saw your name in the newspaper. Your reporters are asking me for money. Oh, what are my reporters' name? She tells me the name. They're like, okay, can we just get these people arrested? Because these people don't work here. Seriously? Yeah, but someone just says, That's very I'm important. Understand. That's a very important call to all of us, you know, whenever we are exposed to any kind of situation like that, to know that there are journalists out there who are purporting like they are when they're not. And uh, it is important to report that kind of thing because much like we always complain about the levels of corruption on any front, sometimes we're the ones that perpetuate it. So if a journalist comes to you threatening to expose you for any thing or whatever it is that you might have done or not done, it's important to go back to the media house itself and make sure that you validate everything before you go and give your comment or give money, so to speak. But I want to thank you both, Charles and Ngaba, for uh, giving us your time tonight. Uh, thank you so, so much, Ngaba, for letting us into your media house. You're welcome. Don't yeah. come back again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so no. much. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank yeah. you very much. That's it from us on My Future Tonight, covering print media in Zimbabwe. I'm Ruven Ekwon. We'll be back with more same time next week. Good night for now. Be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.